What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Queer Collective Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Carbon. And I'm 100% that bitch. Emily. Emily. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome to the show. So today we're going to be talking about friendship, perhaps losing your friends, Ooh. that feeling of rejection when you've tried to make new friends, oh, no. and welcoming people back into your life. That sounds like a nice ending. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're going to leave it on a high note for sure. So... For a long time, and we'll kind of get into this throughout the episode, Mm -hmm. but both Laura and I have been very closed off for a long time in terms of making friends. But recently we went on a camping trip, which was very transformative for us. It was up at Wakami Lake, which is basically eight hours up north. We had no cell service. And we- For clarification. Yeah. That's eight hours if you just don't stop. Obviously, you got to stop. So Mm -hmm. it turns into more like 10 hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But there is no cell reception. You just have to be alone with your thoughts and work through some shit, which we did. (laughs) We certainly did. And you know what? That might sound a little bit scary, but we didn't go into it like, oh, wait a minute. No cell service? (laughs) What? No, it was very intentional. We Mm -hmm. didn't. We wanted to go to a place where there is no cell service so that there's not that option so that we have to face whatever comes up for us. So everything was planned for that and it was very intentional. Yeah. And just the nature of our jobs, editing um, Mm -hmm. videos, doing graphic design, it the past year for us has been very computer based and just yeah. us sitting in front of our computer so i have yeah. been craving so badly to be in the woods and to be in nature agreed and yeah. while we absolutely love our jobs like i love making videos mm-hmm. i love the graphics that you make and making like our podcast and everything everything at all but it's that screen time that computer time it's i'm tough. like oh my god goodness it's a love-hate relationship 100 (laughs) absolutely before we get into it to define what we mean about being closed off to making friendships i just Mm want to be clear it's not as if we don't make any friends but what we really mean by that is making like true deep genuine connections Mm -hmm. with friends which I, for a long time, had closed myself off from doing at all. I would keep very, very surface level Mm -hmm. of like, you want to go to this club? You want to go to this party? You want to do this event? And then both of us go home our separate ways. Mm -hmm. There was no me sharing my emotions and my thoughts Mm -hmm. with you, you know? Like, that's what I mean. Yeah. For me, it was a lot of, we should hang out soon. Right. And And then then never doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. And me just like canceling plans and staying home and watching Netflix. So that is definitely something that we went into this trip thinking about because for me, I guess just to like be a bit more personal because I've decided that I just want to be a more open person in general. I love that. <laughs> and that kind of started with like the sexual assault episode where I just like it felt good to share and I'm going to keep sharing. Okay, keep sharing, please. <laughs> so when we went out into the woods, um, I had initially planned that trip thinking that I was going to bring along one of my best friends and we ended up, I guess... They told me that they don't want to be my friend anymore, I guess. And just saying that we were going separate ways. It was a bit out of the blue and that really hurt me. I sent them kind of like a full love letter, I suppose, and just didn't really get the response back that I wanted. So the whole trip, I they were like very much on my mind. They were someone who we met at like our first Pride Parade and they've been someone constant in my life throughout the past number of years where Mm -hmm. a lot of people who have come in and out of my life during this time they've been a constant yeah so I've honestly have been like mourning the loss of that person um since then and especially during that trip because I knew that they were supposed to be coming with us so that was tough but we decided Carbon and I, that despite the fact that we were with two other people, that one morning we were going to wake up and go on a hike, just the two of us. Yeah. We woke up before any of our other friends. So for context, we brought two other friends along for the ride. And we did that very intentionally because 
like we're going to be talking about in this episode, we want to be more open and invite people to things and, you know, make genuine connections. So mm-hmm. that was intentional and for that purpose. Now, and also I'm like scared of bears and safety in numbers. Okay, yeah, no, yeah, for sure. Okay, yeah, there's that part and me too. Yeah. <laughs> but aside from the bear thingy, yeah, yeah, you was, need someone to trip so you can run away. Oh, I'm yeah, it, all you got to do is run faster than the last person. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Only a little bit. <laughs> but really the intention was just to like bring friends along and make deeper connections and yeah. have real conversations but yeah on the last day of the entire trip mm. emily and i woke up before anyone else and r- i really felt this like calling that we needed like some time just the two of us yeah. i don't know why i can't explain why it was just this innate feeling this like this just I need to do this. It was in my gut. It was in my heart. Mm. So the way that we went about going on the hike is that prior to even entering the woods, we honestly set intentions. So for me, I suppose like the day before I was really silent and I guess meditating on that loss of the friendship that I told you guys about. Mm -hmm. I was meditating on that and we also went in with the intention to think about what we want for the future of Queer Collective. In terms of Queer Collective, when it comes to like one year, five years, it's like you tend to think small because Mm -hmm. you're like, well, how much can I actually accomplish? Mm -hmm. So I'm so happy that we asked each other questions like, what do do we ultimately want to do? It doesn't matter how long it takes. Mm -hmm. It could be 10 years, 15, 20, whatever. But what is the ultimate goal and what's our ideal scenario? So Mm -hmm. when we thought about that, we were like, man, I really want to be the messenger of the queer community all around the world. So we really want to be storytellers. Mm -hmm. How you make connections, human to human connections, even it's if it's from around the globe, like halfway across the world, is through storytelling. That's what brings us together. That's what makes us relate to each other. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, we want to be the capturers of these stories. Yeah, and give people the means and the platform to share their talent and to share their own stories. And when we say stories, it doesn't just mean what they have to say. Mm -hmm. It can mean what they are able to create that's a story Mm -hmm. you know someone's painting could be a whole story yeah you know art is very very much a part of storytelling so we really want to integrate all of that and eventually uh capture these stories and these incredible pieces of art and have people that help us put them out into the world and have the stories resonate with people so part of that is That we want to have eventually, someday, employees such as editors that can edit our videos and audio engineers that can can mix our tracks, mix our podcasts, mix whatever thing that we're recording, Mm. Uh, animators perhaps. Like that would be extremely cool. And with that, what we realize is that wait, wait a minute. We hate being tied down to our computer screen. What if they also start being feeling like they're tied down to this computer screen? I don't want to do that to somebody else. Yeah. So ultimately, if I have an editor, if I have an animator, whoever it may be, I want to help support them and help them build their dreams too. Because... We're really going to get into why, but that's the goal there. And I really want you to explain (laughs) why we feel that way, because it's a whole trip and a whole journey that you have to take us on right now. I'm so glad that we have each other to, I guess, tell stories with, because I start getting so scrambly when I have to (laughs) tell a story alone. So thank you for being my partner in storytelling. (laughs) (laughs) But the conclusion we came to is that I want to be the person basically to uplift them 
and help them reach their goals. Yeah. You know, so I want to welcome people into our lives and be the person that mentors them and supports them in that. Yes. And the reason that we came to this is because we have such a lovely, beautiful mentor in our life who is doing that for us. Yeah. And her name is Rhiannon and she is our boss at Conscious Economics. Mm -hmm. Um, But like so much more than that, she's our work mom and we love her so much (laughs) because she has basically given us everything that we need to foster our creative talent and foster queer collective. Mm -hmm. And she does that knowing that one day we are going to leave her because we're so successful. Hell yeah. Oh, excuse me. (laughs) Who's knocking on the door? Success, honey. (laughs) Yes, and she does that knowing that that's going to be the outcome. And in my mind, I said, I know that that's what I want to be doing. And basically what that is is motherhood I came to. Motherhood and true love fearless love yeah because you are giving so much of yourself to somebody else knowing that one day they are going to leave you but you're still going to be their cheerleader and another half of that was connected to the story of my friend and knowing that sometimes when you love someone so much that your paths are going to separate and Oftentimes your past can come back together, which I really do hope that happens, but sometimes they don't and you have to know that that's okay and your journeys are just separating. Absolutely. And in this moment, I honestly, like, I started crying, like, just being in nature was so powerful. Like, I was sobbing, but in a really beautiful way. Like, I felt my chest and my heart opening and I felt more connected to myself and connected to the idea of... I guess, motherhood in like an unconventional sense. Like yeah. I, I want to be <laughs> like, like, I, like a representation of what a mother is and what a mother feels like. So yeah. get out of your head, like, you know, pregnancy, giving birth, mm-hmm. you have a, t- a child now, you're a mother. Yeah. So th- get that out of your head in the conventional sense. Now mm-hmm. think deeper than that. What does a mother do? What is a mother figure? A mother is someone who gives you their unconditional love. It is someone who supports you no matter what. It's someone who is there to lift you up and catch you when you're falling down. It's someone who ultimately one day, even though she's giving you all of the love that you can possibly need, one day you leave and she'll set you free. Mm-hmm. You know, she's not going to hold you down and tell you like, no, you have to stay here because I've given you this love. No, mm-hmm. like I've given you this love so that you can go out into the world and now spread it. Yeah. So going back to your friend mm-hmm. being a matter, a matter of loving someone and maybe they're not ready for that love. Maybe they can't reciprocate that love. Maybe they don't understand what they're feeling and they walk away or maybe they feel so much love that they now want to go leave the nest mm-hmm. and spread what you taught them. Yeah. Ultimately, yeah. what a mother is, is that unconditional love. Yeah. And basically the day before I was silent all day thinking about this person and then you came into the tent and came and spoke to me and I was crying and feeling like I, what's the point of making friends? You know, when you like true friends or you really are sharing things when they end up leaving you. And that's where I, my mind was at honestly the day before. Yeah. And you were really talking about, well, what's the point of giving someone my love, my energy, my Mm. attention, if they're just going to leave me. Yeah. That's truly how you felt. So I'm so happy that we could come around full circle to the conclusion that we did. Yeah, yeah. And for me, like where I came to was that I want to start loving people fearlessly. Mm. And what comes along with fearless love is that 
there's going to be rejection associated with that. Some there's people There's going to be rejection, there's going to be heartbreak, mm-hmm. there's going to be disappointment. Yeah, some people aren't ready for the kind of love that you want to give them. And the love that I want to give people is like intense, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I love you so I freaking much. I freaking love you. I miss you when I blink. <laughs> I love you way too much. I can't stop living without you. You're my whole life. Okay, not like that, but <laughs> not quite that intense. Uh, but, yeah, but just below it. <laughs> the people that I welcome into my life, I want them to know that I love them and I want to make them feel so completely welcome here, like at Queer Collective, in my life, in everywhere. I want people to know that like they're loved and they're welcomed and some people just are not going to be ready for that. And I have to acknowledge that. Yeah. Yeah. But you never know one day they might be ready and they could come back. Exactly. Exactly. And another piece of that is we've watched our boss, Rhiannon, um, who has the most open heart of anyone that I have ever met. Yeah. And it is so beautiful, but we have watched her get burned so many times. Get burned, get disappointed, get betrayed. And Mm -hmm. it could have been so easy for her to just say, I'm giving up. I'm not going to open my heart to anyone else. Mm -hmm. I'm going to close off and that's going to be it. It could have been so easy Mm -hmm. for her to do that. And it's easy for anyone to do that. What was difficult and so beautiful Mm -hmm. was that every single time something like that happened, she came back and she said, I'm going to continue to love fearlessly. I'm going to continue to open my heart to everybody because I can't stop. That is innately me. And if she hadn't done that, we would have never met her. And if we hadn't met her, like I I can't imagine not having met her because she's so such a significant part of our lives now Mm -hmm. and has taught us so much just through example, the way that she leads her life. Yeah. And before I didn't understand it, but she is able to create honestly magic and it does come with her ability to love people fearlessly, but her ability to, I guess, like accept heartbreak, but to use heartbreak as a means to dig deeper and to love people from even like a deeper place as well. And to like continue on doing that, because if you aren't willing to open up to people, then you're going to miss so much. Yeah, absolutely. You're going to miss so much. So many beautiful relationships that can be formed, Mm -hmm. wouldn't be formed. And I can't imagine my life going throughout my whole life and say like I'm 80 and I'm looking back at my life and I'm I'm reading the novel that is my story yeah and thinking to myself I wish I had been more open yeah I wish that I had shared more Mm -hmm. or I wish I had loved more I don't ever 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 want to feel like that yeah and to me when we talk about motherhood Mm. the most I suppose perfect in my opinion representation of it and it's all around us is mother nature and that might sound corny to you but hear me out mother nature gives abundance Mm -hmm. it gives life it gives oxygen it gives clean water to drink it gives food Mm -hmm. and it, it gives us everything that we need to grow up and thrive and chase our dreams. And it never, ever expects anything in return. Now, that is the most unconditional love that you could ever ask for. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, that was a huge piece of why I came to that is because we were standing in the middle of the woods. Yeah. And I was I was looking at Mother Nature and I was touching trees and I was just like breathing the air And I realized that not only are we in this womb that is earth, (laughs) but I also want to be that for other people. Like, I want to be what Rhiannon is to us for others. You know, I want to welcome people. I want to build them up to the point where they are going to leave me inevitably because I have helped them so much and i have like pushed them and encouraged them towards their goals and think about this now before you know i know we're talking about motherhood and we're talking about 
cultivating this and that mm. for other people. We are learning day by day. Mm -hmm. We still have a lot of foundation to build mm. with Queer Collective. We mm -hmm. still have so much work to do before we can get to that ideal place oh, where yeah. we can give everyone <laughs> everything that we want to give them. Yeah. However, it starts somewhere and we're starting here. But think about this. If Rhiannon is giving us all of this unconditional love and support mm -hmm. and helping us build our dream mm -hmm. knowing that one day we'll probably leave her quote unquote leave her i, I say that lightly mm -hmm. and, and 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 pursue our own dreams mm -hmm. i don't see a scenario where we don't come back mm -hmm. to collaborate Yeah. Or come back to oh God, work absolutely. on a project together, come back for this, come back for that. I f truly feel in my heart there's going to be so many opportunities in the future. Whenever it is that we end up leaving, so to say, mm -hmm. I, it's not truly leaving. No. You know, it's just spreading what she was able to give to us, yeah. to other people. I, I don't consider that leaving. No. And why wouldn't we come back a lot? <laughs> yeah, no, I absolutely you know, love I, I love it here. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so when you when you create that kind of uh, that kind of a space and that kind of a relationship with people, they don't want to leave you per se. They just want to like spread the love. Honestly, they want to yeah. spread the message. That's that's what we're doing right now. That's mm. why we sound so hippy dippy mm. is because we feel so much love and we just want to yeah. spread it yeah. and. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah. I want to talk about, though, quickly how we and someone else can apply this to friendship, you please, know, please because do. at this point in our lives, and I know for a lot of our listeners, when you are out of school, perhaps like, I guess, just out of a university setting and working, this can be the hardest point in your life to make friends. And that yeah. can become so lonely. And I know that in North America, there is a huge loneliness epidemic, honestly. That is yeah. one of the number one leading causes of depression, anxiety, and suicide is that yeah. we are feeling so lonely. And these friendships, quote unquote, that we are creating are so surface level. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all yeah we should hang out soon you know never like it actually doesn't really serve us nothing a lot of no the one time. no one has anyone to truly lean on you know and i was feeling that for a long time as well like you were the only person that i felt like i truly had to talk to mm -hmm. but so many people do feel alone and i like i hate that so how can us and our listeners i guess start cultivating that i think that ab above all You have to start putting in some effort. If you truly are feeling this way, then you have mm -hmm. to start putting in some effort. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I, you know, whenever I have a lot of things going on in my life, obviously there's certain things that you need to work on on your own, and mm -hmm. that's totally fine. However, if you're anything like me, please listen to this. I have a really, really hard time letting people know that I'm not okay. I have a really hard time opening up about it. I have a hard time asking for advice or asking for help. And the truth is that there's no reason to be afraid of that because you will be surprised as to who, just by, if, if you decide to, to tell someone what their reaction will be mm. and how much they could support you and how much love that they actually have to give that they've been mm -hmm. holding out on because they didn't even know you wanted it. Yeah. I, it's definitely a two-way street. Mm -hmm. And in order to cultivate relationships that are meaningful and, and, and serve you and serve them and have an abundance of love, you kind of have to lead it. You kind of have to lead those conversations. You kind of have to lead those those moments mm -hmm. in order to create yeah. that kind of a relationship. And the way that you do that is by starting to be more open and more loving. 
For example, if I have a friend that I'm thinking about, I'm like, huh, I wonder what they're doing. I hope they're okay. I hope this, I hope that. May, like in the past, I would just go on Instagram mm -hmm. and just like look at their stories and be like, oh yeah, they're doing okay. All mm -hmm. right. I, I'm not even kidding. I would literally do that mm -hmm. because I was afraid to reach out. Why was I afraid to reach out? I don't know, man. This whole like social media thing creates weird, weird restrictions and boundaries and there's this whole culture in our society where it's like hey you want to meet up yeah we should totally do it and then you never do mm -hmm. I, that's definitely a thing there's a there's a bail culture yeah as well well what i started to do is start like challenging that mm -hmm. so a challenging it so if i'm thinking about them i thought to myself while we were in the woods like why don't i ever let anyone know that i'm thinking about them yeah i, I never do that Mm -hmm. and when we got out of the woods i was like i'm excited to go back to toronto to society and start applying what i learned so mm -hmm. now if i'm thinking of someone i'll message them yeah and it, it's a simple thing like hey thinking of you i, I was mm -hmm. thinking of you i just wanted to know how you're doing check yeah. in and see how you're doing and you never know what beautiful conversation can come out of that yeah Absolutely. As well as asking people to hang out because I, mm -hmm. again, used to be, yeah, let's hang out. And then I would get so afraid that I would never actually ask, even if I wanted to. Yeah. So now I'm like, you know what? Doesn't matter. Let's ask. The worst they could say is no, yeah. which means I'm going to be doing the exact same thing that I was doing five minutes ago. Yeah. And that's honestly, that was a huge piece for me as well. Huge. That rejection piece, which is like part of this podcast title, um, is massive for me because I've, it's probably happened to me like four times where I felt like I really vibed with someone. Mm -hmm. And then yep. when I go to ask them to hang out, either I just like get completely ignored or they like brush it off. And I'm just like, so embarrassed. <laughs> you know maybe yeah. move on yeah but the the point isn't to stop trying though mm -hmm. the point is to continue yeah. to try a big piece that i kind of want to say from that because i feel like maybe some people will relate to that sort of rejection feeling i think yeah. everyone gets that in some way yeah. or another um is to start recognizing the people who are reaching out to you and it might yes. be in more subtle ways because I used to feel like wow everyone that I've tried to reach out to is rejecting me I have no one I have no friends etc cetera, etc cetera. and then I really started opening my eyes and realizing that there's so many people who are reaching out to us and yeah. who are trying to be our friends and, 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 and it was like flying over our heads like yes. nobody wants to hang out with us mm -hmm. like and it's just like okay pay attention yeah. Open your eyes. See who's reaching out, even just to say, like, how are you doing? In really subtle ways, in, you know? In, in, even if it's the most subtle ways, you yeah. know? Maybe leaving a comment or your, on your Instagram thingy. Mm -hmm. That's them thinking of you yeah. and trying to form a connection with you, no matter how small. So another thing that I would add to that is to just say yes more. Mm -hmm. So if somebody asks you to hang out... Don't be a don't, flake. <laughs> don't fall into that bail culture. Like yeah. say yes and actually go. Mm -hmm. Again, you'd be so, so surprised mm -hmm. and probably elated mm -hmm. to find what comes from hanging out with a person in real life that... Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't know very well. Yeah, and it's summertime right now, and we've been locked away for so long. So long. I really encourage everyone to do this. Way too long. To just start saying <laughs> yes more often, because we very recently, I'd say in like the last month since we've gotten back, have started saying yes, and we've started going to things. and Hanging out with people. And I am like, I would call myself a very introverted extrovert. Like I'm able in the right settings to be very extroverted and very fun. But because of like past experiences and my social anxiety, I have in many cases become an introvert. So I started getting a lot of fear of just like going to new places, doing new things, but honestly pushing myself to go into these settings, but specifically into places where I feel safe. You know, like I yeah. said, we started going to yeah. like a mainly predominantly queer dance group on Sundays and just hanging out with people who are already reaching out to us, who I know that like 
I would be comfortable with them. They like they know that I'm queer, who I am, etc. You know, yeah. so just saying yes to these opportunities, I know that I'm going to feel comfortable in that setting, and there's no reason for me to be saying no, yeah. other than me just claiming to be tired, etc. Like your energy can be uplifted if you just start saying yes more. Absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. So say yes more, and also ask people more yeah you know yeah but not in that flaky way like we Mm, should hang out like set a time set a location set a date and follow through follow through and if they say no or they bail last minute yeah okay that's fine Mm -hmm. maybe the next person will hang out with you like definitely there's going to be plenty of people Mm -hmm. that are going to be so happy that you even ask them yeah human beings innately are social you know ever since like human history we've needed community to survive absolutely we needed to be in groups so that we can do our regular activities and that's why we couldn't really go into the woods alone because i felt like i needed other people to lean on in terms of just surviving you know and that is such a huge part of our dna and who we who we are we feel better when we are surrounded by other people when we're surrounded by people's love and connection so building connections building friends is so important for your health and well-being. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's crucial for survival. Mm -hmm. Mental health survival, physical survival, Mm -hmm. social survival, everything. So to say that you're not going to go out there and make friends or you're not going to say yes would be a disservice to yourself. So look out for you. Love yourself. And by doing that, you're going to love other people. And by doing that... You're going to have a better life. Yeah. So I hope you do take our advice from this and follow us in loving people in a very fearless way. And if you want to <laughs> hang out with us, reach out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or come join a little queer dance times. Yeah. Or come join queer dance times. Yeah. <laughs> okay. With that being said, that is the end of the video. So we hope if you enjoyed this, you like, comment, and subscribe. Mm. Because we put out new videos every single week and you do not we want sure to miss do. them. With all that being said, you guys, we will see you in the next pod. Peace. Peace.